the first two weeks were awful, but I saw the numbers start changing on the scale really quickly. And in two months, I lost 35, 40 pounds. And I went, okay, this is great, but absolutely no cheating. I, I threw out everything in my pantry. I threw out everything in the fridge. Like it was funny when I look in my fridge still, it's okay, steaks. And uh, that's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, fellow carnivore enthusiasts. I'm Adam from Carnivore Today. And today's interview features an incredible guest, Ryan Murphy from the Against the Grain YouTube channel. By embracing the carnivore diet, Ryan has not only shrunk himself by over 100 pounds in six and a half months, but also has so much energy he has a hard time getting tired and clocks in an average of 21,000 steps a day. If you have struggled with controlling your weight or just lack of energy to even care to control your weight, you'll definitely want to listen in for the insight and wisdom Ryan is about to share. Before we dive in, Please take a moment to subscribe and enable notifications so you're always in the loop for future videos. A big thank you to those who have already done so. Now let's get started. All right, we're here today with Ryan Murphy of uh, the Against the Grain YouTube channel. And I uh, thank Ryan for coming on for this interview. I truly appreciate it, man. Your, your content is very inspiring. And uh, I especially like the, the, the tilt towards the carnivore diet, obviously. And uh, I love that you sustainably uh, raise, raise cattle and, and things like that on your farm. Um, can you start off by giving us just a little bit about yourself before we jump into the carnivore diet? Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. Uh, um, I, uh, I've had a journey last few years. I, I started in uh, March of 2022 and moved out here. Um, uh, East Texas from uh, Southern California. So a little bit of a, a little bit of a big change. Um, it was moving right during the start of the craziness so that made things a little bit more difficult, but learned how to start a farm, learned how to run a farm. Uh, in that time, I uh, got a little bit complacent with myself because I thought, okay, I'm, I'm doing all this work outside and, and doing, uh, you know, just, just, I'm doing that. So in my head, I deserved to eat a little bit more. And uh, I ended up putting on like probably 50, 60 pounds. And I said, mm -hmm. okay, this is, this has got to be a, a big change. Very cool. Um, so what, what exactly inspired you to start the carnivore diet? Did you see it in a specific place or did you just kind of, you know, know through eating in the past, other diets or anything like that to, to tr uh, try this diet? I saw it, I saw it a, a while ago, I think on Joe Rogan. I think okay. I, I thought I saw a Jordan Peterson interview or part of it or a clip of it. Mm -hmm. First I went, that's nuts. I think that's a little bit too much meat. I went, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all for, for eating meat and everything. And I just went, you know, that, 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 that just sounds a little bit crazy. Well. <laughs> You know, it, it just, it, I, I figured the extremes on any end are, are, are bad, but mm -hmm. then, uh, then, you know, I started looking at it a little bit, probably, uh, October, November ish of, uh, 2021, 2022. And, uh, I was looking at him going, maybe I should give this a try. Cause you know, I, 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 I hadn't jumped on the scale at that point. I just knew that I needed to do something different. Uh, then, uh. Um, December 2nd, I, I remember, that was my wake up call day to where I jumped on the scale and it said 286.6. And I went, there's no way, there's no way. And I went, all right, you know what? I like meat. I like to eat meat. I hate cooking. I don't like it. It's not fun for me. I don't know how to do it well. I, I, but I figure I know how to grill up some steaks. I knew how to cook a couple hamburgers and stuff. And I went, if this works, then this, you know, and then I'm growing all my, basically all my own meat here almost. Um, so it's like, this would be perfect. I don't have to go to the grocery store. I know it would be going in my food and, um, let's, let's give it a try. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah. That's, I think, uh, every, well, almost every carnivore's dream to be able to grow their own food <laughs> outdoors. That's, that's incredible, man. I, I definitely want to get to where you are someday. And in, in regards to that, I'm sure there's a lot more challenges and you may say, uh, you don't 
maybe maybe think twice about doing that with uh you know your experiences but uh yeah definitely i i mean that's something that i previously wanted to do a homestead and uh after growing vegetables and all the animals and bugs that you have to kill in order to have some vegetables and then starting a carnivore diet no more homestead for me but i'd rather have a pasture you know and ha have some uh cattle out there oh, for sure you know I Every year uh, that I got, since I've gotten here, I said, I'm going to grow up in the garden. You know, I'm going to have just everything. I'm going to be able to eat on it, go outside, have all the fresh veggies, all this stuff and everything. But there's a, there's a, there's something in, in Texas called heat. And <laughs> <laughs> you can't water enough. You can't get out there enough. You, there's so much else going on. It's just not worth the time. Yeah, that makes total sense. It's, uh, it seems to be pretty brutal out there, especially this time of year, huh? Yeah, right now, I think it's going to get up to 140, which is one of the hotter days here. Right, right. So I understand you've achieved significant weight loss. Exactly how much? And uh, can you tell us a little bit about that journey? Yeah, I'm down now. I think it's 100 and, 106 pounds. Wow. Uh, so I, last time I had on this on about a week and a half, but it was like, I think it was like 180, 181. Um, so I'm, uh, it, and it, it happened pretty quickly. Uh, you know, the first, uh, now the, the first two months I said, okay, this needed to change. Cause I, I, I was shooting for a goal of like 135, 140, I mean, not, uh, 235, 240, somewhere in there. I figured mm -hmm. that's where, you know, that's kind of where I came out here at and I'll be kind of comfortable there. And then we'll see. Um, in, in two months I was down under 250, but I was as strict as you can be with it. I mean, I was. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't, well, a couple of mistakes I made. I wasn't salting anything. I was just eating as, you know, I was eating ground beef and then I started eating chuck steaks. That, that's been my main staple. Um, the first two weeks were, were awful, but I, I saw the, the numbers start changing on the scale really quickly. And, uh, yeah, in, in two months I lost 35, 40 pounds and I went, okay, this is, this is great, but absolutely no cheating no no looking no no I, I threw out everything in my pantry i threw out everything in the fridge like it was it was funny when you when i look in my fridge still it's okay oh steaks and uh that's that's it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's insane the our refrigerators now um so did you did you have any challenges so well first of all let's go back and uh, how long, how long has it actually taken you to, to get down to that uh, 106 pounds lost? It's been a little over eight months now, but I got, I got down over 106. And it was, I remember it was July, I think it was July 20th of this year that, wow. uh, um, no, June 20th, one of the two, uh, it, it took, it took me six and a half months. Um, and that's when I hit a hundred pound mark and now it's just. Still have a little bit more to go, I would say, but uh, right. it's, there's, there's not much left and it's kind of hit that kind of like plateau kind of, I'm trying to figure out like a maintenance protocol, if you want to call it that now, right. Right. <laughs> switching it up. Yeah. That's awesome. So did you experience any challenges along the way, you know, such yeah. as cravings and stuff like that or restroom breaks, whatnot? Oh, uh, thankfully restroom was, was good and no, no issues there. But the first two weeks, uh, I I went through, it, it was a sugar or carb withdrawal because I went cold turkey. I mean, I went from, my diet consisted of like eating a box of Jose Olay taquitos at every, <laughs> that was, you know, just don't cook, don't right. you know, fast, something's easy. I, I'm tired from working outside, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I, just something quick. And I went, okay, no, nothing. And I... Uh, I, I didn't, I didn't do too much research into it because it was just that shock of a, okay, I'm not gaining another ounce kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, it, I felt, I mean, I felt tired. I started sweating. I had no energy for the first two weeks. I felt awful. The first day was okay. The, the first night was terrible because my body's going, um, you're missing something and carbs, sugar, whatever you want to call it. It just all the bad food it's like hey you, you used to give me a lot of stuff and now you're you're rich just just me i i had a hard time sleeping second day i was a slugger back okay there we go 
um, as, as sluggish as can be, I, uh, I remember the brain fog was terrible. I had to think about everything three or four times before I could do it. Um, and that was, that was, I think it was day number 14 that just a, a, a flip switched to where it was like, okay, now you're good. Like now you're fat adapted and now you're, you're able to, to live a normal life. My energy just completely shot up after that. But those first two weeks were, were, were as rough as can be. I mean, I had a, I mean, just a hard time moving, hard time getting up out of bed, a hard time going to sleep. Just, I, I would just start sweating and, and it was wow. just, was a withdrawal. And I just kept pushing forward because day number five or whatever, I got on the scale and I was already down for seven pounds and I went, it's working. <laughs> uh, though, yeah, that, that, that's, that's what kept me going. That's what kept me going 100% because I was like, oh, 279. Okay. That's, that's, that's cool. Um, that, that's a one mile. So, and I figured, you know, I, I gave myself whatever I wanted and made myself happy for however long that now it's, uh, now it's time for me to suffer a little bit. Right. <laughs> for sure. So looking back on that two weeks, if you didn't see any results on the scale, would you have continued, uh, at the, at that time? And then now that you know that you were able to get through it and see the results after the fact and the health benefits. Do you think that you would uh, view it differently now as opposed to then? Uh, first two, the, the, if I didn't see it, the results the first two weeks, I probably would quit. Like I'm 95% sure I would have um, because I just, it was, it was, it was so awful. I mean, I, it was during the winter. So I, when I'd go put out hay for my cows, I'd just come in and I'd just, I'm going to take a shower and I'm going to bed. And I'd sleep because I think one of the, I slept like 23 hours or something like that. Wow. Just feeling so bad. And I figured, you know, if I sleep, then I don't feel bad. Um, lo looking back now, oh, 100%, 100%, I do it. I mean, I don't want to go through it again. Uh, I do some stuff differently. I'd, I'd start, you know, I'd add some electrolytes. I'd be taking quite a bit of salt in this with, um, a three or maybe a four day water fast, um, to where it's not just such a, I mean, it's a, it's a different kind of radical change. Um, but yeah, I would have, uh, I 100% would have done it again. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I, I'm right there with you. I, I've had struggles in the restroom for a couple of weeks, uh, had maybe like the keto flu symptoms for like a day. So it wasn't as bad as, you know, your, your withdrawal symptoms, but, uh, yeah, looking back. I would go through the restroom thing again, for sure. After all the, everything that it's healed, it's insane. It's, ins I mean, I'm still dumbfounded even to this day. And it's, I live with it every day. It, it, it It's crazy because, you know, it's, it, 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 it makes sense. But then again, it doesn't like, I, I should not, I mean, I'd get on the scale some days and in the beginning I was doing it every day and I got a little bit obsessive over it. I mean, 2.7 pounds down. <laughs> that's like what like that doesn't compute you know calories in calories out thing but it just it was working yeah yeah that's awesome so your how how have your energy levels uh changed from before starting this way of eating and and now oh uh energy levels i cannot i have a hard time getting tired i i, I have a hard time like i need to go do stuff i need to go move i mean I have the, 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 the tracker on my phone where it tells you how many steps you take a day. I'm anywhere from 17,000 to 25,000. Some, I, 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 wow. I mean, I'm on a farm. I, I move a lot. I have a lot to do. There's, you know, um, but it's, it's, I don't walk anywhere anymore. I mean, I, I walk everywhere anymore. I haven't gotten on my side by side in months. Um, it's still the same spot. It probably needs <laughs> because nice. it's, you know, I'd rather move. I need to move or else I'm not going to be tired at the end of the day. Right. <laughs> well, that's a good side effect. Oh, yes, it's a, right. It's a great problem to have. Okay. <laughs> so most, most critics uh, of this diet are, they say that you, uh, you'll get nutrient deficient. Um, what experience do you have in that area or insight do you have in that area or something that you can say to that point? Uh, I've been fine for over eight months. I feel great. 
I feel better than I did when I wasn't doing it. I mean, I, 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 well, I had, I got life insurance during this cause I turned, I was going uh, from 29 to 30, it turned 30 back in May and I figured, okay, you know, if I get life insurance early, then it's a way cheaper, you know, when you cross that threshold, it goes up and, uh, they had to do labs on me and I haven't had a blood test since I was seven years old or something like that. Okay. I don't go to the doctor. I don't like doing that kind of stuff. I stay as far away as I can. Um, I was a little bit worried because I was like six or six or seven months in, um, and everything came back perfectly fine. Like great. It's fine. And it's like, okay, if I'm, if I'm mineral deficient, then, then where's it at? Where, where's it hurting me? Labs are all good. Everything's all fine. Uh, every, you know, I remember my mom, what about your cholesterol? What about your cholesterol? What about you? <laughs> then I got the results back and she's like, Okay, that's that's that the, you're you're doing good. Okay, you're fine. And that's awesome. Uh, so I don't know anything of sciencey about it. I don't do I don't really get into the whole sciencey stuff. I just know how I feel and what my lab said. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I haven't had blood work done yet, but uh, soon I'll have it done. Just so everybody that asks me, you know, I'll be able to show them something. But uh, I mean, there's no way that I'm deficient in anything with how I feel and the energy. It's just, there's no possible way. <laughs> well, if you think about so it, too, what? I'm mostly eating, uh, eating cow or beef and, uh, right. They, they can get all their, uh, um, their minerals, the most part uh, from grass that that's every, you know, their, their, uh, their diet is balanced through there. Um, maybe with the exception of salt and put out a salt block and mineral block that they don't even really even use anymore. So if, if that gets translated into beef, then you're eating your eight and then you should be fine. That's the way I see. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. What does a typical day for you, uh, eating carnivore diet look like? Wake up, um, wake up kind of early around here. Um, drink a bunch of water first thing in the morning. Um, get all my stuff done. Usually uh, outside until about 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock comes in, do my work on the computer. Um, three o'clock comes around. Uh, that's when uh, I'll, I'll go eat a steak, maybe two. I'm trying to eat a little bit more because I'd like to put on, I'd like, I'm trying to start put a, putting on muscle now because I'm just not eating. I mean, you still have to eat uh, the, you know, what you need to eat in calories, what you're spending. Um, and I, uh, for the for the most part, for the first six and a half, seven months, I was eating one steak a day, one time a day. So that it was a it was a chuck steak, and when you look up the calories on that, it was anywhere from three quarters of a pound to a pound. That comes out to be eight hundred to twelve hundred calories. So I was nice. you know big time calorie deficient, or, you know in a, in a deficit, mm -hmm. and it, that that contributed to it. To, to it as well, not only the diet, but the calorie deficit. And uh, I, I, I accidentally did intermittent fasting. Um, I didn't mean to do it. It just, it just happened because I, st when I started, I was eating twice a day. You know what? I, I'm not, I'm forcing myself to eat the second time. I'm gonna just, and uh, um, I started, I went to one, once a day because that's what I felt like. And then I started looking it up. I'm like, is that okay to do? And then a whole bunch of, you know, intermittent fasting stuff came up and I went, oh, that was an accident, but that's a great thing. And it's just, it's just worked. It's just, it, I don't know how else to say it. It's just done really well for me. That's but awesome. I, I eat at three o'clock and that's about it. Nice. Well, that should provide some time savings, huh? Well, that, that, that's the big thing too. I hate cooking. I don't like cleaning up, blah, 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 blah. I can go cook, be cleaned up and eat in 15 minutes, 20 nice. minutes. And it's just like, okay, now I can go do more stuff. Right. Yeah. And just imagine most people on the standard American diet, they probably spend more than that. Just trying to figure out what ingredients for the main course is going to be, you know? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm, well, think about it. If it, I try not to go to the supermarket, I try and get my stuff because uh, my my steers aren't ready to be processed yet. They're very close, but I try and get my stuff in the farmers market. But if I have to go in the grocery store, I'm in and out in like three minutes. 
walk to the back, know where my stakes are, grab them, go to self-checkout, boom, I'm gone. Like, <laughs> no more spending half an hour, 45 minutes in the grocery store, walking up and down every aisle, blah, blah, blah. No. The, the, just, the, just the time efficiency of this. The, yeah, for the sure. Things. Yeah, no, no more washing massive amounts of dishes and pots and pans. Yeah, I got it to where, you know, I have my, uh, I have my, my cast iron skillet. Mm -hmm. I have a pair of tongs. I have a fork and a knife and I use a plastic or I use a paper plate because I just don't want to wash the plate anymore. <laughs> you know, he's good to go. I'm, That's awesome. Let's get it. <laughs> it's funny because it seems like most carnivores have that similar setup, you know, and it's like, uh, like a, like a camping out, outfit or something, you know, well, it's super, I super simple. I, I, I mean, I really haven't um, ran my dishwasher in months. It's just like, nice. I haven't needed to. It was like, oh, that thing's still there. <laughs> right. <laughs> For sure. We use ours as a drying rack, basically. <laughs> yeah, I'd hate to see what it would happen if we actually uh, turned it on. I mean, the seals are probably dried out <laughs> or something and probably leaks. <laughs> exactly. Um, so now, now that you've seen you know, the significant weight loss and these benefits, do you see yourself continuing to eat this way or are you going to maybe add something else into your diet? Uh, I'm starting to add more stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm learning more about what I can and I can't add in. Um, like I, I, I just processed a couple of my pigs for the first time. Okay. And I got the pork back. And it's, this is pork raised differently, raised on, on a whole bunch of compost, raised on some pasture. They, it, they're not in a hog, you know, facility or whatever. So, I mean, it's, it's the, the color of the pork is, is a deep, dark red. It's not like the pinkish white that you get in the grocery store. So you can tell, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's good for you, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I would eat, there's to be some days where I hamburger or hamburger meat just because it's what I had available. I went and said, okay, I'll just do the same thing with sausage for a couple of days. I felt weird. I felt really, I started feeling weird. I, my, my shoulders, I have two torn rotator cuffs and I need Tommy John surgery in my elbow. So it, the, the inflammation goes there really quickly. I felt like mm -hmm. my shoulders were cracking more. I felt like my neck was starting to crack more. I'm going, what's going on here? Like, what's up? And I went, okay, I've been eating pork the last few days. Uh, maybe I, I, I shouldn't do that. Uh, I went back to steaks in two days. I was back to back to normal, feeling great. So, like, I mean, I still eat bacon and stuff, but like, I can't eat exclusively pork. I, that's something that I learned real, uh, just real recently. Um, mm -hmm. Get into that too. And there's a there's a few reasons why. And one of them is being that it's not a ruminant animal. Um, but I'm starting to add in. Uh, I'll, I'll eat pickles now. Quality pickles I can get. A little bit of cheat day that I take full advantage of uh, for the first two months. I didn't cheat at all, uh, but the, every week or once a week, I mean, I know this is going to make some very purists go crazy, but guess what? <laughs> pizza. I'll go eat a whole pizza in a day. Right. But Hey, you're, you're you, man. You do you, you know, hey, you, you know, that's it. I've gotten, to, I've, I've said this in a few of the, and I've gotten quite a bit of pushback and it's like, oh, you're not a true carnivore. You're not true this, you know, it's like, hey, you don't have to be that dogmatic about it when, when you've had, you know, pretty good results. You know, I would say, you know, when you get to where you want to be, Hey, you, you, you're doing this so you can have a better life, live it, mm -hmm. you know? And, uh, I mean, is it something that I do, uh, multiple times? Uh, back to back to back to back. No, uh, the time that I, uh, I've done, I, I, I've fallen off the wagon. If you want to call it a couple of times, one of them was when I, I went on vacation for my birth, went back home to California and, uh, my mom made a, a birthday cake. I ate the whole thing. My <laughs> aunt made spaghetti that she, that is a, the, this amazing sauce. I ate whole wait, thing. wait a minute. Wait a minute. How, how big was this cake? It was. <laughs> nice. It so was, like, oh, it, was, it was, it was, it was over the course of a couple of days, I think in three days. Okay. Like, gotcha. Gotcha. So, you know, I'm, I'm just like, you know what? Fine. Now, when I came back, I, I was like, okay, I wonder if this is gonna be an issue. 
Um, so I did a, a two and a half, at least a two and a half day fast. Mm -hmm. Went back to eating meat, perfectly fine. And, you know, I jumped on the scale when I came back and uh, I, I gained like six or seven pounds. Mm -hmm. In like four days, I was, I was, I lost those six or seven and was down another like one or two. So it just, it flushes out of you. Right. And then what, you know, what I no noticed too, is that there's something called a, a, a fat whoosh. I don't know if you're familiar with that at all. Uh -uh. Um, like w when, when I was dropping down, I'd, I'd, I'd go like this, I'd just go and then I'd stop and then I'd go, I'd have these big, I'd lose in big chunks on right after the beginning, you know, in the, you know, 40, 60, 80 pound range. Right. And, uh, I would lose a day or two after my cheat day. And what I looked up and what it was explained to me, I talked to a couple of people about this is that when, when you're, when you're constantly losing weight, you're losing, you're losing, you're losing, um, the fat cell will, will get rid of the tri I think it's the triglyceride and then it will stay the same size, but it retains water. And when I would go eat my cheat meal, or if you want to call it that, I'd go eat tacos or burrito or something like that with the tortilla, um, maybe a couple of veggies and stuff, the carbohydrates, um, it, what it did, it somehow released the water in the cell. And next thing you know, I drop, go down four or five pounds and then overnight. Mm. And it, that was, you know, when, when I was plateauing that, that, that just seemed to, it just seemed to help. I mean, it, it got me through, okay, I, what I'm, I'm point one up, point one down for oh, two or three, two weeks on end. Like what's going on? And then next thing you know, it's a big drop and it would continue to be a big drop. So, I mean, I think that you have to figure out what, what works for you. Uh, and to the carnivore purist, am I a hundred percent carnivore? No. Uh, am I a hundred percent keto? No, because I eat, you know, I'll, I'll go eat a pizza. Um, right. but I, I'm 100% Ryan's diet Yep. and what works best for me. And I, I sure, is it bad for me? Bad for you? Maybe. Um, but I think the whole point of this is you got to figure out what works for you. Yeah. So true. It's interesting you bring up the pork and having issues with that. I commented on your video that for some reason, when I smoked a pork butt, um, I, I, I don't, I, so I had cake that day too. It was my wife's birthday. <laughs> so I don't know if I was feeling the effects of the cake or if it was the pork. And when I tried pork previous to that, it seemed like there was a little bit of an issue. So this time it was multiple days of eating pork butt because there's so much of it, right? Yeah. And it seemed like it prolonged, you know, three or four days afterwards of like uh, joint pain and stuff like that, like you were experiencing. So, yeah, it's interesting that you brought that up. Well, um, what's, what's weird is, well, I mean, you have to look at what the, the pork eats. Um, right. You know, it, uh, if you get standard raised pork, they're going to get corn and soybeans. Um, and we don't want that in our body. So you are mm -hmm. which a, we're, we're eating meat grown up with corn and soybeans, you know, and they're not getting a balanced diet because they're omnivores. I mean, you go lay down in a bed of pigs and they'll try and eat you. <laughs> well, I mean, no, legitimately they'll, they'll, they'll try and eat you. Uh, wow. And you know, they, they need to eat meat. They need to eat. They, they, they're, they'll go eat grasses. They, they crave grasses too. They'll, they'll graze like a cow does it if given the, the right environment. So there's a, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not too religious, but if you look at the whole the the jewish and the muslim they don't eat pork because it's an, uh, they call it unclean oh too much about that but i mean there might be something there i think that there 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 is something there because i just don't i i i just felt almost achy and my my joint started to crack more so again mm -hmm. more what works for you this what sucks is that i have a freezer full of pork right now <laughs> Well, it's too bad the, the cows aren't uh, carnivores, right? Right. <laughs> so it's also interesting that you bring up, uh, you know, having a cheat uh, or I don't like calling it that. I don't know what to call it. You know, it's just you decided to not eat carnivore for that day or whatever. But uh, whenever I do that and I have carbs, it always seems to uh, give me past a weight loss stall for some reason. I'll have a little bump in, in weight, but then it just starts dropping again. You know, I had, I got down to the last maybe 10 pounds or so to lose, which is like, you know, kind of around the waist, you know, uh, 
love handle kind of stuff, you know, loose skin or whatever. And uh, I'm like, man, how long is it going to take for this stuff to go away? It's just not going anywhere. My weight's not going anywhere. And uh, have a cheat. And uh, next thing you know, down another five pounds. That's that's weird because it took months and nothing. And it was nothing. So yeah, there's definitely something to uh, what you were talking about. Yeah, I I 100 believe it because I mean I've seen it just like just like you did. And you know I think do carbs have their place? Maybe. Um, and you can, if you, if you strategically use them too, especially if, if you're somebody that experiences something like that, Hey, more power to you. That's great. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the name of your channel is against the grain, which is a pretty strategic name. It seems that do you, do you think that that kind of coincides with, with this diet? Uh, it's be, it, it's one of the reasons why I changed the name. Uh, it used to be okay. called foods farm. Um, okay. and I, uh, I didn't post for about six months. Um, cause I, I need to, I said, you know what? I need to work on me. I need to focus on, on doing the stuff that I need to do. And I said, some time I knew I could see the changes I could, you know, on the, not just in the mirror, but on the, on the see myself sometime. And, uh, I said, I want to rebrand the channel. A uh, couple things, a couple of reasons why it works so well is one, I don't eat grains anymore. Cheat day, you know, out, you know, out the window. Uh, second thing, uh, all my uh, cows here, grass fed, grass finished. I don't give them an ounce of corn. Don't give them an ounce of soybeans ever. Um, don't even give them their cubes. They get alfalfa pellets, which is a form of grass. And then uh, my life, I've just done things differently forever. Uh, when people say, Hey, you know what, you, you know, the people say, Hey, go left. I'm going to go right. Just <laughs> heck of it. And it's, it's worked out pretty good. I, you know, I, I, a, I went to a private high school and I think like 99% of the people went on a, a college after that. I decided to go, the, go the other direction. I didn't go. I went to six weeks and I dropped out and it's just, it, 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 it it's just, everything's meshing with, uh, with the the channel name so i said you know what screw it we're gonna go with the against the grain that's awesome man i love it i'm exactly the same way brother if somebody says go left i go right what, anything <laughs> i'll do the exact opposite i'm not going I with just the flow don't listen well <laughs> for sure yeah and i love the i love the pun with it too you know against the grain you no more no more bread exactly for sure um so let's see uh Outside of, of your the carnivore diet, um, what uh, practices and principles do you employ on your farm that uh, also help with your well-being? I think you alluded to that a little bit with the grass-fed, grass-finished. Grass-fed, grass-finished, uh, mob-grazed. Um, there, there's, you know, labels don't mean anything in the store. It's, it's really, you know, if you see the word natural in anything, it means nothing. Um, you know, the, the, the FDA actually lifted the regulation on what it said when on, which is, uh, they did this, did this a few years ago. It used to be that, a, um, a, a steer, a cow, a bull was being processed into beef, um, had to be on grass for 90 days out of, okay just by osmosis just because how the 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 system works uh they're gonna be on grass for unless you're eating veal uh for more than 90 days because it, it takes uh six months for a calf to get wheat from its from its mom and you're not going to feed the mom grain because you're it's too expensive and it's easy it's cheaper for them to be on grass and just a lot of different benefits then they go to a a, a finisher or they, then they go to, uh, um, they get sold after six months. Somebody else will go put them on their pasture. They'll get beefed up to about nine months. And then they go to a feedlot and they get, uh, you know, force fed corn and soybeans. And it's, that's where it gets real, real bad. Um, so we don't do any of that. Uh, I, I, like I said, they've never had a morsel of, of any kind of grain besides the seeds that grow on grasses naturally. And this is where some people get uh, a little bit funny because corn 
is technically a grass. So right. they'd be like, oh, corn's a grass. So, you know, it's still grass. But okay. No, it's not. It's a modified, you know, 300 years ago, is corn a grass? Probably. Now, no. Corn, I wouldn't even call it a grain. I would call it more of a chemical concoction that, is, that rises up out of the ground. Um, the way that it, it's produced now. Mm -hmm. So we, we do things to where it's, it's, it's mob grazed where I move them just about every day. They're, they're moved around. They mimic how the, the bison, uh, used to roam the, the great plains and what it does, it helps build up the soil. Um, because, and when the soil gets built up, it means the grasses can grow better. When the grasses grow, grow better, it means the beef grows better. So it's a, it's a regenerative farm. It's a, it's, it's the. Really, if, you know, people talk about sustainable eating, well, if we sustain the way that we're eating right now, we're still not doing good. If you, if this, it's the only way to regenerate the land. Yeah, for sure. So the, the land is being regenerated and you are being regenerated in the process. Exactly. That's awesome. Um, so many people have reservation, reservations about trying the carnivore diet. Um, and for reasons, obviously, you know, where, that they're raised up and taught, you know, the food pyramid, and, you know, cholesterol's going to kill you, and fat's going to kill you, and things like that. So, how do you navigate social situations with people, or do you just not worry about that? I don't. I don't really care. Um, if uh, you know, I think <laughs> myself a, 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 a cheat day. I mean, like, if people, what do you mean the way that people look at me if they think I'm doing something funny? Right, right. Well, I'm against the grain anyways. Everybody knows so <laughs> we can do stuff differently. We're not going to, you know, my mom might be the one to kind of get in my ear and try and convince me, but she knows after, you know, two knows it's going to be, it, it, it's not happening. So right. don't listen to anybody. Um, do what you, do what you think is best for you. You know, do your own research if you want to call it. Do your own trying, you know, oh, you, you say your, your, your cousin says you're an idiot. Well, see you at three months in the next family party and we'll <laughs> better. I mean, that's the way that I take it. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't have a filter. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, neither do I. So your, your journey will undoubtedly inspire uh, tons of people to uh, take a serious look at this diet. Um, so what, what advice would you get, give to somebody that, that might be potentially looking at this and thinking, you know, Hey, may maybe I should try that thing. To try it. What's the worst thing that can happen? Uh, is it going to kill you? No. Why? How do we know this? Thousands and thousands of people are doing it now. Now I'm not a doctor. I'm not a, you know, a nutritionist or whatever, but look at, look at the results that people are having. Okay. If it works for that person, why doesn't it work for you? You know, that it, it's, that's the way it, you know, it goes. It's, how I, it's, ha it's how I passed high school. Guess what? In the first two years, I was doing terrible in, in high school. Then uh, I almost got kicked off a baseball team. And then coach said, you need to try harder. My guy in the said, you need to try harder. So I sat next to smart people and they, they put C, I put C, they put D, I put D. And it's, <laughs> it's how I passed. And I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, who Tony Robbins is uh, with the number one quote that I think he says is, you know, find somebody that has what you want, do the same thing, expect the same results. True. Yeah, that's great advice for sure. Um, so where can everybody find you? Uh, against the Grain, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram, um, all the, I think, TikTok too. Yeah, all, all the different social, all, all the different social media. And I mean, uh, I, I just want to stress to people, like, you know, when, when you first start this, you know, be as, as, as strict as you can be and get past the, you know, whatever issue or whatever, um, you know, side effect, if you want to call it that, I don't know what you want to you know, keto flu or, um, sugar withdrawal or whatever, what it is. It's it. It's, you, you just, just got to keep going. You got to keep pushing yourself to get, don't, don't mess around for the first little bit until you, you, you know, you're fat adapted. What does that mean? I don't know. You, you, your, your body will, will tell you when you feel, when, when you feel good, then you, you know, keep doing it for a little bit longer. Cause it was, it, it wasn't until I got under the two fifty mark that I said, you know what, I'm going to give myself a, give myself 
a reward. And that's to eat a little bit bad for a day because I know in my mind that, okay, guess what? I can, I go back to eating meat, you know, the next, however long I can, I can work with that. I can, I can, uh, get that off. So like, that's why going forward, am I starting to reintroduce stuff? Sure. Am I going to end up somewhere in the more like ketovore probably sphere? Maybe. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't see myself doing a, a lot of the, yeah, like the, the different kind of milks and the different, you know, chips and bars and all that stuff that, you know, they, mm -hmm. they sell, um, I, it's going to be still probably at least nine eighty five 85 to 90 percent meat with a, a garnish of, you know, carrots every once in a while on the side, because I like them or, a, you know, if I order a, a ribeye at a restaurant and guess what, I'm probably gonna eat the green beans too. I won't eat the mashed potatoes. <laughs> um, won't, won't go, I probably won't go there. Um, but you know, double green beans with the, with the ribeye I'm, I'm all good with. So it, that, that's, that's where I think I'm headed. I'm not sure yet. Now, if, if it starts to go bad, guess what? I'll go back to eating my one steak a day and I'm, I'm happy with it. You know, trying to go from, I, I, I've said this before, but going from, uh, on an airplane from LA to New York, it's not just, oh, take off and put it on autopilot and it's going to be like this. No, you're going to have to go and, you know, a breeze is going to make you go off course a little bit. So you got to correct and, you know, oh, you got to go around a thunderstorm up here. You know what? There's a, the winds are coming down. So, you know, it's, 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 it's like this, mm -hmm. and, but it just matters that, that you know how to get there and you know how to, you know, cr correct course. And you can do it. I mean, I, I don't see why anybody wouldn't do this if they, if they have some sort of issue going on or if they, especially for weight loss. Cause I mean, that, that's the only reason why I did it is to, to, to drop, to, you know, get healthier. Um, there's no reason why they shouldn't at least try it. Cause if they're, I mean, if, if you're fat already, guess what, what you're doing is not working for you. So do something different. Yeah. So true. That's, that's great advice, Brandon. Uh, I, I think that's definitely going to help quite a few people getting, getting past that first uh, couple of weeks is a must. And once you, once you get clear of that, it's uh, it's much, much, much easier. Just like Ryan said. It, it, it not, I wouldn't say smooth sailing. There'd be, because there'd be, I, if I didn't have a cheat day, because I was only eating 800 to 1200 calories a day, I'm six, three. Okay. So I, I, and I do a lot around the farm. I do, I do a lot. Um, there'd be days, uh, that I wouldn't, I, there'd be weeks where I ha wouldn't have a cheat day for, you know, two, three weeks at a time. And I started feeling kind of bad because I just wasn't consuming enough calories. So, you know, Hey, you, I'd go run and grab a sandwich and guess what? I'd feel better. So, mm -hmm. I mean, eat enough, uh, try and stick to um, pork, I mean, not pork, of beef, lamb, um, maybe a little bit of fish. Like on some days when I would, uh, you know, the, the steak wouldn't fill me up and I was still hungry. I'd go to the store and go grab a big thing of shrimp, pop those. Or like now I'm, I'm, uh, I, I, I grow my own, raise my own, uh, meat chickens here. Nice. So. Uh, me trying to put on me actually trying to put on weight for like the first time in my life I, <laughs> today. Um, I've already ate, but I had a steak and, uh, I ate a whole chicken, like the whole thing. And I used to not eat the skin. I used to peel it off. Now I actually like the skin with the mm -hmm. steaks. I used to cut the fat off, give it to my dogs. Now I like it. It's really weird. Um, so you, you, I don't think you can overeat on this, but you know, stick to just learn what works for you. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. Eat eat, eat till you're comfortably stuffed, and yeah, just be pay, pay attention to uh, you know, like Ryan says, the calorie uh, deficit. Sometimes you maybe you just need to grab something a little extra and uh, and see how you feel. T you know, test and experiment with it, and you know, you do you. Yeah, I mean, well, one of the things that I I think that uh, I, I there's been uh, people that say, oh. I've been doing this for a year. Very few people, very few people. And they said that they haven't had a lot of uh, results from it. What uh, hmm. I noticed when I, when I talked to them is that they eat a lot of dairy and there's uh -huh. a bunch of calories in dairy and you still need to be in a, you know, a calorie deficit um, in order to lose weight. 
for the most part. Um, but it, it's, I, I stay away from it. I mean, I have some cheese every once in a great while. Um, and that's about it. A lot of people will do the carnivore diet and they're still drinking just loads and loads and loads of milk. And I think that's where somebody can go wrong as well. Like me and dairy, it hasn't agreed with me forever. So I just, I've, I've stayed away from it basically just, just for that. But I think that's, that's one of the places that, that people can go wrong. So just a little, uh, you still, still watch your calorie intake. Don't go over, don't be doing like three or 4,000 calories or four or 5,000 calories a day. Um, if you're trying to lose weight and usually that would come from, uh, the most caloric dense thing that's dairy. Yeah, for sure. The dairy always stalled me and it always, I had to adult acne and, uh, anytime I'd eat cheese, it was the acne would always come back in full force until I finally learned just, you, you can't eat this, Adam, <laughs> keep it out of your diet. I try, I mean, I, I think people should try and get as close to the lion's diet as possible, especially, uh, you know, in the beginning, because Asian diet and you, you, you're, you're eating one thing. Um, but you know, it just, just that, that's, that's a couple of places where I think people can go wrong that I've seen. So just a little, you know, warning, if you want to call it there, just, if you're doing that and you're not seeing the results that that you want, Hey, try and cut that out and see what happens. Cause I don't eat yogurt. I don't eat cottage cheese. I, I'll eat butter. Um, that's one thing I will eat a lot of, um, mm -hmm. but that's a, about it. Yep. That's awesome. Well, Ryan, I appreciate your time today. I mean, it was truly an honor getting to talk to you. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, chat like this again for sure. Oh, please, that'd be cool. Um, if anybody hasn't uh, subscribed to Ryan's channel, uh, it's, I believe, at Against the Grain on YouTube. Yes, Go subscribe. He's got a lot of cool uh, content over there, and uh, he's just getting started. So I definitely appreciate you, Ryan, and, and thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having me. This has been, this has been awesome, and congrats to you and your success with, the, with, with this as well. Thanks, man. I definitely appreciate that. All right, we'll talk soon. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks, Ryan, for sharing your incredible journey with us. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe to at Against the Grain Farm on YouTube. There you'll find some really great content that you won't want to miss. We'd love to hear from you in the comment section below about your own experiences with the carnivore diet. Tell us about the positive transformations and benefits you've encountered. And don't hesitate to share this video with anyone who might find Brian's carnivore journey both inspiring and healing. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Your support truly means a lot to me. Thank you again. Stay amazing. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.